Yo, what is up guys? It is Small back again with another Epic 7 video for you guys today. And today we're going to be talking all about a unit that you guys might have gotten from the triple custom banner that just ran a couple weeks ago. Or even last year in the fall and you guys have just not had enough time or resources to go around and build her. And that unit is Luna. Now Luna is basically the poster girl of Epic 7. She's pretty much everyone's favorite waifu or you know almost everyone's favorite waifu in the game. And she is a very powerful unit that you guys should be building if you guys have her on your bench. Now before we get started with the video though guys, if you guys aren't already subscribed to my channel, I recommend subscribing because we're going to be updating a lot of the old tier lists in the past. I know you guys love the tier lists that I've been doing. Um, I just didn't really have time in the recent recently to actually update them but after my exams and next week we should be back to uploading more frequently and more you know high effort videos that being said we're going to talk about where she's good in what skills you should be skill enhancing what to what to build on her and the stat guidelines as well so yeah jumping into the video luna very very powerful unit for pve you know after her buffs she's become a very strong single target DPS or damage dealing threat. You can use her basically anywhere you need a single target damage dealer. And also she's very, very strong in like fire expedition, dark expedition. You can even use her in light expedition. And she's also not that bad in wyvern either if you're looking for a good single target damage dealer. For PvP, people mostly use her in Guild Wars offense as like a single target nuker, or even an RTA as like a bruiser or like a counter unit, but for the most part she's not as good in PvP as she's in PvE. I think she's very strong for PvE and in PvP, you know, she's just okay, but you can definitely make her work if you have the gear to back it up. That being said, let's talk about her skills real quick in case you guys don't know what she does, especially after since she got buffed a couple, a couple months ago. So her S3 is a single target attack. It is a 100% chance to defense break once you max enhance it. I didn't max enhance it actually. And also this will penetrate defense by 50%. So even if um, you know, you're know you attacking a non-defense broken target, you're still going to do a lot of damage even against tanks, which makes her a very, very strong single target nuker. Keep in mind this will always attack with advantageous element. So you won't really miss against earth units like Ramuru and stuff like that, even though you know you are an ice unit, unless they have like a Moonlight Dream Blade or a built-in evasion like a Violet would. Also, you get an extra five souls when you kill an enemy. That one's not too important. Next, we have our S2, which got reworked. It's actually very, very nice. You get 30% crit chance and 30% crit hit resistance, which makes her a very strong uh, bruiser unit because you know you need less stat investment into crit chance. You can build it more into bulk. And the crit hit resistance will also make you tankier to get lucky. Also, keep in mind there's a secondary effect. You get increased attack by 30% when the when her own health is 50% or more. And also you will also get 30% defense when the caster is or herself is less than 50%. So if you're above 50%, basically you have plus 30% attack. If you drop below 50% HP, you will lose that attack bonus and you'll get 30% defense instead, which makes her you know, a lot more tankier when she is lower on life. Next we have her S1, which is her signature ability in my opinion. It is a single target attack that it's a, has an RNG element to it. And basically it can attack one time, two times or three times and obviously if you attack three times you'll do more damage and depending on the amount of attacks you've done it will reduce your s3 cooldown by however many times you attack because you'll notice that our s3 is a very long cooldown at 10 turns but every time you know your s1 you'll be reducing the cooldown also you will see our push yourself by 15 percent and if you equip the exclusive equipment for her s1 you can actually boost yourself by 30 percent which is a very very nice bonus also keep in mind you can soul burn this to actually bypass the RNG and always attack three times. So it makes her a very very good manual manual like single target DPS, especially in like abyss settings where you're gonna want to manual stuff anyways. Very very strong manual DPS. Even on auto, she's still very strong. It's just that there is some RNG built into her damage. So yeah, looking at her skills, you'll see that she has all single target damage. Um, she has some crit chance. 30% crit chance is a huge huge buff. It's like basically half of a necklace. Uh, because you're getting 30% crit and necklaces will give you 60%, so it's very, very nice. It makes her a lot easier to build than before, and it's just like a very nice bonus in a passive ability because it makes her a lot more tankier as well, while boosting her damage output through the attack bonus as well. So yeah, Luna, very strong single target DPS um, for her stats and what sets you're going to want to run on her, guys. So I'm going to go over two builds, one for PvE and PvP. Let's start with the PvE build because I have my Luna on a PvE build. You're going to want to run her on a speed set plus a crit chance set that you see on your screen here. You can also run a rage set if you're looking for more damage, but I find speed set to be better and more consistent in my opinion. And honestly, rage set gear is a lot harder to farm. And if I'm going to run my Luna on a rage set, you know, I think it'll be better for, you know, like 
expeditions and stuff like that but luna sometimes i use in like abyss as well so i kind of like to keep her on this speed set so you're gonna see that you want to aim for 85 percent crit chance in my opinion especially if you're only planning to use her in fire expedition where she is the best single target dps for if you want to use her in other areas of content you want to shoot for 100 percent and then you want to really stack crit damage and attack um, speed is okay as well, but keep in mind she does have that CR push from her S1 and from her exclusive equipment, so you don't really need too much speed, uh, but you want to really aim for a lot of attacking crit damage. I recommend at least, you know, 250% crit damage. You want to shoot for 300 though, and for attack you want at least 3.5k, and the rest should go into speed so that she cycles really quickly and can really reset the cooldown on her S3. But yeah, for PvP, you definitely don't want to run her on this kind of build. I think she's way better on a bruiser type of build. Although you can run her on like a speedy, you know, one-shot build like a Remnant Violet would be Violet would be on. But I think because of her buffs to her S2, she's actually better on like a counter build that's a lot tankier. Because, you know, if you do proc your counter, you'll S1 and CR push yourself. It makes her very strong. Usually counter sets are very good on units with a strong S1. And Luna's S1 is very, very powerful. You should probably aim for about like 180 speedish. You don't want to be slow, too slow so that you never take a turn. You want to run for 100%, you want to shoot for 100% crit chance, obviously. About 250 crit damage, 3k attack, and then everything else into bulk. You want it to be super, super bulky. You don't really need effectiveness or effect resist because, you know, even though your S3 has a defense break, you know, you don't really use this for that defense break. You're mostly using this for the penetrate defense and the advantageous element attack. Very, very strong single target nuke. You don't really have to worry about that defense break landing for the most part. Now for artifact, guys. I think her best artifact for PvE is going to be either Draco Plate or even Uberius Tooth, or even there's a three-star artifact you can use, especially for um, Fire Expedition, where you know um, what's it called? The uh, Daydream Joker doesn't work as well. You can use Ancient Sheath; it will boost your damage by your basic skill by a certain amount. And yeah, you're mostly going to use Luna with her skills off on auto, especially for Fire Expedition and Wyvern, because even though her S3 is nice, honestly, your S1 does more damage if you you know are attacking a defense broken target which the target should be defense broken most of the time in pve anyways for ink for exclusive equipment there's three options personally i think infinity slash is the best one her s1 because basically you're going to always see our push in pve it's really nice because you're getting more turns off to do more damage and in pvp it's nice if you're running her on that counter set now if you do run her on that single target um, damage dealing set like a remnant vial would be on where you're on speed set and you're using as your, using her as a single target nuker with like an AWOTS or Amelia, then you're want, going to want to run the third exclusive equipment where you get an extra turn when the enemy is defeated by your S3. Because what you can do is you can S3 after getting boosted up, and then you can S1 right after into another squishy target and then do a lot of damage that way as well. So yeah, Luna, very, very powerful unit for PvE. In PvP, she's definitely usable as well, very fun to use. So it's really up to you what kind of build you want or want to run her on for PvP. Personally, I don't use her in PvP. I used I like to run her on a PvE build because she's so dang good for Fire Expedition. I can easily break 1 mil points super easily on auto with Luna with this setup. And also for Abyss, she's very strong as well as a single target DPS. Uh, she's very good in Abyss because when you manual, you can soul burn and constantly do a ton of damage with her S1. In Rage, she's also good as well as a single target damage dealer. Wyvern, she's pretty decent as well. That being said, how do you want to Mola Gora her? So you're going to see that I don't have her S3 maxed out, and let me explain why. So I said before that her S1 does more damage than her S3, so you're definitely going to want to max this out for the damage. S2, you're getting free stats, so you definitely want to max this out as well. S3, if you're using her only in PvE, guys, you're going to mostly never use her S3 in my opinion, so you don't really need to Mola this at all. But if you do plan to use her in PvP, you definitely want to max this out as well because she's a damage dealing bruiser unit. Uh, but yeah, I only use her in PvE guys, so I never really got, you know, felt the need to max this out on her S3. But, you know, if you do plan to use her in PvP, then you definitely want to aim to max that out as well. So that's pretty much it for, you know, how you want to build Luna and where she's good at and what sets you want to build. Basically all about Luna. If you guys want to see more of these videos and also want to see some tier lists in the future, which should be dropping very soon, then make sure you guys leave a like and comment because it really helps my channel a lot. And I'll see you guys next video. Peace.